What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to What's Your Story? So a very, very exciting guest I have on today, someone that I met back at Springfield. And as you can see, I met a lot of awesome people at Springfield. So a lot of the guests were coming on from Springfield. But Mike um, stood out to me a lot. I reached out to him because he's got a lot of value to give. His career has been really awesome and his journey has been really awesome. But something we'll talk a little bit deeper in as we get into the interview is his mindset. Um, I was doing a 40 hour fast. I talked to him kind of right before it started. You know, he had a similar mindset when it comes to embracing discomfort, chasing discomfort, um, and just pushing yourself physically to challenge yourself mentally. And I think that's something that more people need to do and something that he really preaches. He works with the military. So a lot of the stuff he's doing is very mindset related, but also has that health and fitness component to it. So um, I'm just going to jump right in. Mike, I want to welcome you to the show, man. Awesome. Thank you, Jeff. So nice to uh, be able to reconnect and join you on your show. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. I'm excited to have you on. And like I said, the, I think there's a lot of value you can give. But I want to kind of go back to the beginning because I think the beginning of the story kind of tells a lot to how you got to where you were. Um, and a lot of it was fitness health related. How did you get into the fitness you know, industry or when did working out actually start for you that kind of sparked that interest? So I actually was 14 when I first started training back at this um, this small like specialty gym in like Medway, Massachusetts. And I had my first trainer, my first coach, who actually ended up becoming a really good mentor and role model for me. And within a year of training back then, I went from being like one of his clients to actually just being friends with him and training and being training partners. And this guy was like 28 and I was like now at this point a 15 year old kid who was in there asking questions, trying to learn about physiology, anatomy, trying to ask the why behind pretty much everything we're doing. I want to know the purpose. It's like, it's cool to go out and do some things, whether it's health, fitness related or anything in life, but I wanted to know a little bit more what was behind that reason and what we could do to really control those type of aspects. Gotcha. So it all started like that 14, 15 and so on range. So as you get into high school, did, um, did you jump right into sports, you know, and it seemed like you were very interested in like, you know, the fitness side, the physiology side. Was that more of a confidence thing for you or you just like it caught your interest and there was something more to it? So that's a great question. I, I've been playing uh, sports since I was like in third, fourth grade. I played basketball, football, baseball and pretty much did everything. I started really getting into sports come middle school where I was wrestling and playing football. And so I had a coach one day tell me that if I wanted to play in high school and be good at playing sports, realistically, I needed to start training. And so I took that initial mindset from being in eighth grade to my freshman year, and it was probably the fall of my, uh, sorry, the spring of my freshman year, I started actually training and using weights. Um, prior to that, I had done things on machines that had really not too much of an idea of what I was doing. But once I started getting in training at that facility, I started actually becoming more confident in myself and my abilities because I was seeing the change within the physiology and the anatomy of what I was doing and what that really allowed me to accomplish within my sports and also just with myself being more confident in who I was and what I was capable of. It, it had a great overall impact on me physically, but my also mental mindset. It was fantastic. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. So you, you played sports in high school. You said you played a bunch. Uh, when did it start? You know, when we met at Springfield, you know, you got really into powerlifting, you got into the weightlifting side more, obviously that stemmed from high school. Um, after you got out of high school, when did you know you really wanted to go somewhere into that training, fitness, coaching side to it? Was that, you know, pretty much right out of high school or you it, it took a little while to figure that out? So that honestly came right out of high school. I, I loved sports uh, for a number of reasons. I, I had been injured a few different times in high school, so I had that initial – thought process and in, in seeing the impact of what injuries can do to you for a physical standpoint, as well as the mental side of things. And I just wanted to really be a part of that health fitness realm from that standpoint of playing sports, being injured, and then also just knowing that I loved training and I loved going out and trying to accomplish an objective. And it seemed like an overall really good fit for me to take that step towards going into exercise science and more into that coaching realm. What were some of the injuries that you had in a lot of people struggle with this, and I'll ask this question because I think a lot of people, they get injured, there's a setback in life, things don't go as planned. How did, what kind of injuries did you have and how did you respond for them to just kind of keep moving forward and kind of shrug it off and be like, you know, hit the ultimate goal of and continue to move forward? So I think, well, starting off, some of the injuries I had, I have separated both AC joints to a grade two level in my left and right shoulder. So my collarbone doesn't sit as it realistically should in uh, in typical anatomy ways. So 
I had issues with overhead movements. I had issues with just really moving my arms about just because of the AC joint itself. And then I had a few different ligament tears in my knee. I tore my PCL completely. Uh, I tore it probably about four different times overall. But so right now I don't actually have a PCL. And I had also torn my LCL and like a partial MCL. So those are just a bunch of. <laughs> so the only thing, luckily, the only thing I didn't have was my ACL. And gotcha. at that time when I had that injury, because of the shape of my LCL, MCL during my initial injury, they just had me recover through training in PT because there wasn't a lot of really good research at the time in terms of what PCL surgery was capable of doing. It was like a 50% success rate. And I also didn't really want to go under the knife. I was like, I don't really have to. If I can control the environment that I put myself in, in terms of training and allow myself to control that aspect, then I want to do that first before having a surgery. Because a lot of what we can do is take control of our own lives to some degree and and make it work. And that was one thing I noticed as well through coaching is there's a lot of things that we can control variable wise. And if we go into the mindset of looking at controlling the controllables of life, then we're going to get a lot further understanding that perspective or having that type of perspective. Yeah, I agree. I think that's perspective is a huge thing. You know, the way you look at it and the, the mindset you have going into that situation, especially with injuries. Um, with going out of high school, you go to college, you go to Springfield, very strength conditioning based school. You know, want, did you go initially working with athletics? Was that your goal? So I started off going in there with athletics and I really wanted to start going into, I think, being there. Everyone's initial thoughts is going private sector or like professionals to some degree. And I really either wanted to be like with pro sports, whether it was football or basketball, or if it was private sector, I believe it was API back then, but it's IMG Academy now and the different sites that IMG and then like Exos have. Those are initially some of the goals I had at like 18 because I wanted, I wanted to be able to work with the best. But in that process, I started realizing the true importance of just being able to work with any type of individual. And I started falling in love with the general and special population because I feel like there's a lot more to offer them because a lot of times with professional sports, you don't really get a lot of time to really work with them and, and work specifically on behavioral changes and doing what we can really do effectively as coaches. I saw more of that through undergrad with some of my internships and also with Dr. Davidson and taking class with him for special pops because that really changed my path in terms of how I thought about exercise and how I thought about health and wellness in redirecting where I realistically thought I was going to take my career. Yeah. I mean, the Pat, Dav you're talking about Pat Davidson. Oh yeah. Yeah. Dude, yeah. He's everyone. I mean, from the Nick and Zach Hadges, my buddy, Jesse Caruso, I don't know if you know him at all. Um, I met him in Boston. He actually had the job that I took when I went to Boston before he left. He okay. works at strength, uh, is it strength Boston now strength, something like that. But anyway, he's one of those people that just, you know, speaks so highly of, of Davidson with everything he does. So, um, you know, you're definitely not alone in that aspect. So when you get into, so now you're at Springfield, you're coming to the end, you end up doing your master's. Um, what led you to do your master's? Was it just to pr improve, get more knowledgeable in that side of it? Obviously that's probably a big part. And then where did you end up right after there? I know we talked briefly, like they had this small stint of like, we might move in together, going to the Boston, what was your journey um, coming out of uh, college, you know, and then also the master's degree in general? Okay. Um, so, I mean, back to the whole Davidson thing first, too. When I actually had him, I had him as a professor for measurement and eval. And the way he came off, I just, like, really was more in tune with how he was teaching. And so when I had him in my junior year for special pops, it honestly kept me at Springfield. I was really close to leaving the program because initially I wasn't getting a lot out of it. As much as I was trying to put into it, I just didn't really get a lot from it. And then I had him for special populations. I had um, Stefan Siebert, who I believe now is working with, like, I think USA Soccer. He was there doing his doctorate and teaching some classes on sports psychology. And as soon as I had those classes together, looking at special populations, looking at the different perspectives that people have coming into health and wellness, and also what injuries can do to you to perform throughout life, it just made things click. And I didn't realize we had a program until I sat down one day and I sat down with uh, Dr. Murray, who at the time was running the program for sports psychology. And I had a further conversation with her and it kept me on track to actually go into the master's program there. I also went to the master's program there because I, I wanted to keep learning. I wasn't really ready to just leave school. I felt like there was so much more that I could still accomplish in the schooling system there. And 
it just really ended up working out in a, in a positive way. And I'm very fortunate for it where I ended up being able to stay for another two years, do my master's in sports psychology and in positive psychology, and then continue down that path of doing some research and, and writing a thesis. And I mean, I, it also kind of reconnected my love for collegiate wrestling and combat sports. And I know you alluded to it a little bit earlier, talking about some powerlifting and, and a little bit of strongman were some of the things that I really focused on. But I started getting more into jujitsu, and I'm I'm waiting right now for the coronavirus to kind of uplift so I can actually get back and doing some judo and some muay thai, because I, I just want to be a lifetime learner and be able to cultivate new skill sets. And I'm always open to these opportunities and embracing a chance to develop myself mentally and physically any way I can. I think that's the cool part about being in a coaching realm. And getting back to the the rest of the question you had about going towards Boston, so. I actually got a job at Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center. So I got a job at a hospital in Boston, probably my like in, in March. So I was finishing my grad degree and I actually started working part time in like April and May so that I could make my job work. Otherwise, they weren't going to give me the position. And I got a position as a physiologist and I was doing a lot with um, direct care to either clients or patients with some social work groups going through different things they could do for behavioral change for their health and wellness talking about deliberate breathing, some mindfulness, ways they could better track their nutrition and become more accountable. There was different groups that we worked with, like obesity. We worked with OBGYN directly, and we worked with um, radiology. We worked with some of the nurses there for, for an injury program to get them back to work. And I really got – I was really in a fortunate position where I could really touch upon many different walks of life, whether they were coming from the community, whether they were coming in as patients, whether they were individuals that were at the hospital in – you know, they're working overnight and they're getting no sleep because they're on call for 24 hours. It was a very eye-opening setting. And so, like, we talked a little bit about trying to go to Boston and, you know, things actually fell through for uh, for us there. But what it did is it actually gave me a chance to kind of be at home. I actually did a little bit of work on the side doing carpentry for my dad's business, something I've done for like nine years or so, too. So I've always had my hand in, in a few different things. And I think being in the mental side of health and wellness, it, it kind of gave me a chance to, you know, kind of put my hand in not just the health and wellness, but the overall like spiritual and mental side of things too. And I, and I really love that approach where we can bring bring everything together and cultivate it together and how that can be so effective for us in the long term. Yeah. I mean, I, I love the, the idea of always continuing to get better. And that's something that you know, instantly you just, it resonates with me. I think that's something you're, you're huge with. You're always trying to get better. You're always pushing yourself. Um, where do you think that stemmed from? You know, it seems like at a young age, you're consistently always just what's next. How can I get better? How can I learn more? How can I prove you're, it seems like you're very objective and listening. You're, you know, you're not, you don't have an ego, you know, you, you're willing to take criticism and information. Did that stem at a young age? Where did that start for you? When do you think that just was, you know, started to kick into gear more so? So I think definitely from a young age, I mean, with my parents, like I've had very supportive parents for my whole life. And I always, I mean, I always wanted to be like a happy child running around and playing, but I also wanted to do well and, and do good by them just from some of the values and morals I had from my upbringing that I knew from an early age, like it wasn't about me. And some of like my, my I guess you could say greatest successes in sport stem from being a part of one of the better football teams for the, the town I grew up in that had become like one of the best teams the, the, the town had seen for like 30 years. Being a part of that team, having that camaraderie and that, that type of connection with the guys I played with was one of the most immensely important things for me going through high school and then even having some of those relationships and connections through college and, and to this day. Being able to be competitive, but also being able to build on top of that competitive nature with people that are like minded was something that I'm now more able to look back on and see how important it was for, for me to learn and grow as an individual. And the same thing when I was doing wrestling in, in high school, we, we were a fantastic program. We had a lot of great different individuals and personalities, but we were always about our team objectives, which was winning a state championship and, and just being the best we could because we knew if we were being our best and authentic performer that it was going to lead to success for all of us. And I think knowing that if we bought into the mission and the objective, then we were all going to be successful for the long term. And that was something I'm very fortunate for. Like I said, my morals and values from my parents and then also the coaches and role models I've had. I've been, I'm very grateful, honestly. I've been, I've been surrounded by some very awesome individuals even till this day that there's people that I, I'll always refer back to and, and try and talk to because, you know, a little bit more wisdom and experience in life, I think, 
it allows us to be more open to different opportunities, being able to open ourselves up to have those vulnerable or uncomfortable type of conversations, especially with people that we trust and we know have always had the best interest at heart for us. It seems like you really surround yourself with a group of people at a young age, even if it wasn't on purpose, and then just around your journey in general. How important do you think it is to have the, you know, making sure you're cutting out the negativity and having a support system throughout the whole process? Because, you know, people around you can just destroy you if you're not in the right mindset or, or you don't have that community in place. So I, I love that. Um, I love that question as a whole because there is, there's definitely going to be times in life where we have individuals who are potentially going to be very negative. But there's also a way of using that negativity to make us more effective and to perform better in life. And I think back to a coach I had who would rip me apart. I could never do a single thing right. But what he did, his negativity bias to how I perform versus how I was actually doing, it fueled me. Because it was one of those things where you, you have someone saying like, oh, you can't fucking do this. You're not doing this well. It's like, well, fuck you. I'm going to show you. I'm, I'm competitive in nature. And it's like having that type of that negativity coming from him was able to actually allow me to be more effective in my way of thinking and in my way of performing. So I, like I said, I'm very, very fortunate. I've had a lot of very um, positive and effective people in my life and it's part of the path I've been on. And I'm just very fortunate that I've been going with the flow of these, these opportunities that have come to me. So one thing I'll say too, with the mindset approach is, yeah, we'll have positives, we'll have negatives. And everyone talks about having like maybe those three to five individuals that you surround yourself with as who the, who the person you are that you become. I guess believe that's true to some degree, but I also think if we have perspective and we can look deeply at ourselves and the people we're with, that we can see those type of things as being more pr productive and effective thoughts that we can pull from them. It's not always the case, but like you're saying, like there's ways of being positive and effective with different people that we surround ourselves with. And of course, we want to be able to be in a situation that is better for our overall mental and emotional health. But there's times where we can use more of that negativity to be more effective and to perform well and to drive us. There's some individuals that you look at in, whether it's like sports athletes or celebrities, they come from very bad situations and they put their faith, not only in themselves, but they put their faith, faith in the good people around them and they take and drive themselves to be better because of the times where they had nothing, the times where they were in terrible circumstances. And I think for some individuals, that is a great learning opportunity or an opportunity for them to grow upon. And of course, that's not always the case. Um, I know I got a little off topic there, but no, that's, 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 what, that's one of those things where with, the, with, the, with coaching as a whole, like you see a lot of people walks of life from all over the place. And there's a, there's a, a company in Boston I almost ended up working for, for inner city weightlifting, which was you, you work and you coach and you work with individuals who have, you know, are coming off the streets from having a bad rap who have either been in jail or, or, or felons and you're giving them the opportunity to learn and grow and become realistically become more than society has depicted them as in and, and having an opportunity to i mean it didn't work out but to have an opportunity where you get an opportunity where you, where you have that chance to coach someone and work with them and hear their story and hear what they're trying to do it's amazing because we all talk about different points where we start off in life and it doesn't mean we have to stay there that's the cool part about the, the mental side of things is we can control a lot of the variables, whether it's in a, a predictable or an unpredictable, uncertain situation. There's a lot of things we can control that allows us to be on a better path and a path that's going to lead us to being you know, more fruitful and productive and effective with the way we live our life and the way we go about trying to accomplish these different objectives, whether it's you know, being a CEO of a company or if it's something along the lines of just you know, being a better person. We can do all yeah. of those things. Yeah, and it really comes down to it's very individualized, but I think there's some certain things that everyone can take and that's important. And you, you touched on a lot of them, but it's a simple fact of like being a good person and focusing on yourself, not comparing yourself to others, not trying to live up to expectations, whether it's your parents, whether it's your friends, whether it's people you don't know, society. Because there's, I just saw this the other day, it was this fitness girl competing in bodybuilding, fitness, 23 years old, killed herself, right? You don't know. I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened with that or anything. But you see a lot of people like these situations that you think have it all. They look great. Everything's awesome. And then mentally, they're just mess, you know, just a mess, whether that's they're trying to live up to expectations of other people or whatever it may be. These are such like a, a psychological thing of like, you just got to find you what makes you happy, focus on what your values are. And just I think it's important too to, you know, we're always trying to get pushed to achieve more and do more. And there's value in that. But like, are you doing it for the right reasons? Are you doing it to for yourself? Or are you just trying to impress someone else? 
and which leads to not doing the right thing in the end, because then you're not going to be happy. But then if we can take a step back and just focus on giving, like just being a good person, like be kind, right? Like be a nice person, do something for someone else. You can, your whole day can change by doing something for else. It's maybe sound a little selfish, but you're helping someone and you feel good. They feel good. And all of a sudden your day has changed. And it's, it's like, if we can focus on taking care of ourselves and doing something nice for someone else, and making an impact, whether it's your coaching, the mindset, you know, sending a card, making a message to someone, that's where it all comes from. And then if you can build upon that and find, you know, something that you enjoy doing to an extent and give value back, I feel like a lot of people will, will be in a lot better spot if they can just do some of those things, you know? Oh, absolutely. And, and I think you're, you're, you're inching towards talking about being vulnerable and uncomfortable, which is a, which is a great thing too. Like, when it comes down to it with like I, I saw the post too um it, it is sad when, when someone takes their life it's it's awful like I've had I'll, I've had different friends and different people I've had come across my life who I've had those type of conversations where you know I've told them like I think you need to talk to someone and you need to do something about this and like I love you and the only reason I'm saying this is because I care and I I now realize there's better ways of, of having those type of conversations where you can offend them by saying something like that. But right. being kind to every individual and giving the ability to have trust in you and be able to have those type of those conversations, I think that's an amazing thing because yeah. that means that person trusts you. That person is ready to open up and be vulnerable and be uncomfortable because now they weren't trying to share what is going on in their life for, because for them, it's maybe it's going to become now easier for them to process what's happening. And I love coaching. I love being around people and connecting with people for that reason. Um, I'm someone who I've always found that no matter where I've gone, I always, I'll meet someone, I'll connect with them and I'll hear their story. And I honestly, I love it because I love learning about new people. I love seeing where they've come from, the things they've been able to control and take advantage of to be a better person. And in hearing that across the, like across like the States, across the world, knowing that there's a lot of things that we can do to be kind, to be that better individual, as long as it stems from a, a, a good place, then I think it means we can do a lot to change ourselves, change our environment, change the people we surround ourselves with, and change the world, really. I yeah. think it's really just so simple, but we get caught up in the aesthetics of a lot of things. And like you said, right. it depends on what makes us happy and where that happiness is being derived from. And it's, I think it's, it's interesting as well because I love – being competitive, like I said, and one of the mantras I have with my coach, um, CJ Harper is do better. Yeah. And for us, it's like, it's a thing that we buy into and like, we joke around a bit, but what it means for me is it's a cue. Do better for me is like, okay, focus on how I can perform better, no matter what it really is, whether it's my studies and the courses I'm taking, whether it's working with a tactical athlete in the military, whether it's, you know, going back and working with some, some kids in coaching for, for wrestling, how can I be better for them? How can I best serve them? You know, I want to be coming from a place where I'm serving them, I'm showing them I care, and I love not only them, but also love what I'm doing. And my my goal is always to show that no matter what I'm doing in life. If I can do that, then I'm very happy, and it means I'm going to be successful because I'm giving my real authentic self to these people. And I want to make sure that if I'm doing my best job as a person by giving that piece of me. I don't always, ex I don't expect that in return because I know that's tough for a lot of people, but if I can just make the smallest aota of difference with someone's life, then that honestly means the world. Because I'd rather be able to dish out some kindness and some good that people need than, than hear about or read about someone that's that's taking their life or taking other people's lives in, in some regard. And I've even, being in the military at the position I'm at right now with the last like four months, there's, I think there's been like two or three different suicides within the area I'm at and it's heartbreaking. And it's one of those things that a lot of times you don't know that individual is sad and there's something going on and it's not always the case. But like you said, be kind. Sometimes just having that conversation and, and actually, actually showing that you care and you want to know how their life is and what's happening, sometimes that's all it takes. Yeah. And it's so, important too, I think the word judgment is huge. It's not judging yourself because people are, you know, it could be as simple as you feel like you didn't do enough today and you're judging yourself so now you're putting yourself down, now you don't feel good or you're judging yourself because how you look or you're judging yourself because of this. So it's to the mental side, like if you judge yourself all the time and everything you're doing to an extent that it's like making you feel like crap, you know, we, people have to stop judging themselves, putting so much pressure on themselves to live up to a certain expectation. That doesn't mean not push yourself. It just means stop beating yourself down. Just take one day at a time and like, let's go, you know? And at the same time, like we got to stop judging other people. Like we got to stop 
putting like we don't know what everyone's going through right like you know it could be the perfect symbol it could be someone that is living a horrible life putting up a front whatever it may be if we can stop judging ourselves so much and stop judging our, our other people and just take it what it is if someone's rude to you like don't let it affect you move on with your day like you know have sympathy have empathy for them you know, if someone's hating on you on social media, throwing negative comments your way. The best way that like Gary Vee says this all the time, the best thing you, you just feel bad for them. Like they're so unhappy with their life that they have to take the time out of day to put you down. Like that's saying something. So like have empathy for them, move on. And, and you know, if anything, like let it be. But yeah, man, like it, it's crazy because it's just we need to do that. We need to focus on being just good people, focusing on the positive and, and helping everybody instead of just, you know, social media can get into a war zone of it. So just being positive. And I want to jump into the next part because I think this plays into the entire mindset. Um, and I want to, you know, I'm curious about a little bit more. So you work with the military now. Um, what kind of role do you have with that right now? And, and kind of um, how has the experience been so far? Okay. So it's it's been interesting so far, especially with Corona. Um, the contract I'm on right now is brand new to the installation where I work down in Virginia. So we're just starting to build relationships and we're at the point of building relationships where we kind of got cut off and, and now we're working from home. We're teleworking and we're going through and we're looking at a bunch of different modules that we're gonna we're learning that we're also teaching and instructing as well. It all a lot of it stems from mindset. It stems from cognitive performance. It stems from how cognitive can impact our physical performance. And one of the models that we have in place is called a TPC model, which is the thought performance connection. There's different activating events or thoughts that, sorry, let's say there's different activating events that we can have in life, whether it's a performance being successful, failing, or like you said, it's potentially like, you know, someone's rude to you on social media or someone's rude to you in person. That doesn't matter. That, that event itself, is really not relevant, but how we dictate our thoughts is going to be super important because our thoughts can be effective or ineffective. If we have more effective thoughts about what they're going through and about how we can go about our own day, then we're going to allow ourselves to drive into a better emotional and physical state and then behave and perform better for that day. So if we're taking everything personally, then we're not going to perform well. We want to make sure that we're looking at things effectively. And, and that really stems down to how we approach having a perspective and a certain mindset with our interactions with other people. And, and kind of like you said, it, it goes back to fixed versus growth mindset. Some people don't want to be vulnerable. They don't want to have to show that they're not as skilled or as good as they, they believe and perceive themselves to be. So they don't want to see people be successful around them. They don't. They get jealous. They want people to fail. But there's people that have that growth mindset and they cultivate it and they work on it day after day because that's what we can do is we can continue to grow and change our mind by working on it. But with growth mindset, like I want to see you successful. Like I want to see you, you know, I want to see you rise to the occasion. I want to see you doing things day by day where you're improving, you're getting better, but you're also aware of the things that you've done and how far you've come across and being grateful for where you started and understanding that you've come a long way and you're continuing to progress and develop but you can also be happy with the work you've done and you can still be driven and goal oriented where you want to accomplish more. But too many people look back and they're like, I don't ever, I like, I haven't done anything yet. That's not true. But with a true growth mindset, you're seeing we've done X, Y, and Z, you know, start off, you, you, you know, got a, got a degree for a bachelor's and okay, well next step, got a master's. And it's like, well, some people are like, Oh, well, that's not enough. They want to do a PhD. And they're like, okay, they want to do their own research. And they have these steps that they're taking strategically to improve. But that knowing the fact that some of those individuals, for example, you know, they might have been the first person in their family history to get a college degree. So that itself is a huge accomplishment. But they also can still want to have more and accomplish more tasks. It's not saying that you can be you're accepting being complacent or stagnant because that's not the case. Growth mindset is we always want to continue to develop, but we also want to understand and have an appreciation for where we came from and the things we've already done. You know, what people about, talk about, sorry, I would say people no, talk no, about, yeah. I would say people talk about, you know, Rome wasn't built in a day. It took time. It took deliberate practice building this place to be as great as it was. That's what mindset is. We cultivate it day by day and we put deliberate practice and effort into it to become more effective. When we don't do that, we're not going to build something so great. And, and that's relative to any individual because it's going to take time in, in practice for everyone to become more effective with their way of thinking. But we can 
we could basically, you know, take Rome down in a day, but it took so long to build. That's what it means for us to have these these ineffective ways of thinking or these these self-talk where it derails and is debilitative to our ability to perform and be our best person. So a lot of the things that we're perceiving around us is how we're actually perceiving ourselves in nature and how we're thinking about ourselves. I think back to, you know, if someone's really being mean to you or rude to you, I think back to the movie Big Daddy with Adam Sandler, where he's on the street with with Julian and he asked the score of the of the Jets game and this guy just gives him attitude and is kind of a jerk about it. And I'll always remember this because Adam Sandler's character goes, you're not actually mad at me. You're mad at your father. He's like, whatever the problem is that that person's having, it's not you. Like you shouldn't take it personally because they have something they're going through. If anything, maybe you can do something to help them with what they're going through rather than adding to it or taking it personal where it takes and affects your day going forward. So that's one thing that I, I just always think about because it's never about, it's not about us. It's never about us. So I love that you said, like, be kind. Like, if we can do one small task or one small thing for someone, honestly, that can change someone's day completely. It's, you know, it's it's an amazing thing. It's amazing that we can do something so simple and we can have such a large impact. Yeah. I mean, that's my big push right now because it's just weird. It's just, it's just like uh, you keep seeing all these things and everyone going on and, you know, just like you walk in a grocery store, walk everywhere. Everyone's so stressed. Everyone has so much on their mind. It's like. You know, just trying to make everyone's day a little bit better moving forward is, is if, if anyone can do small things that, you know, I always say, like, just shoot a text to five people you haven't talked to in forever, you know, just like, hey, what's going on? I hope you're doing well. Like little things like that can make a big difference. Um, what are you doing on a day to day basis to kind of create the mindset you have? You talked about the growth mindset and not having the fixed mindset. Are there things that you do um, that teach you that discipline or, or the help grow that mindset on a day to day basis? So. There are definitely things I do day to day. I mean, I do a lot of deliberate breathing, uh, not necessarily meditation, but deliberate breathing to kind of center myself and align myself for the tasks I want to accomplish. If there are times I feel like I'm not centered, then, you know, I'll do some deliberate breathing. I'll go for a walk outside, get some sunlight. I'll put my phone away and, and give myself headspace to kind of relax and, and honestly just like enjoy the environment and enjoy nature and enjoy the things that when we're on screens all the time or if we're just stuck inside, we're not actually appreciating the world around us or the life that we have. And I think that puts, for for me, that puts a lot of things in perspective. And I know, I I realized I didn't answer this from the question before with the military, but like coming down here for me was a, was a new opportunity. It was, it was a vulnerable experience to be, you know, in a different state, far away from home with a new population. I haven't done a lot of work with, like I've done, I've done some work with um, some like ex special forces um, from Italy and things like that, where I've gotten to work with some of those type of individuals and seen their mindset. And so that kind of gave me an idea of the type of people I wanted to work with and wanted to serve and care about. So coming down here, like a lot of my chief objectives is, you know, learning about what I can do differently with the, with the models, with the, the courses I'm instructing or the, cor- the courses I'm also taking and learning. And that's had an immense impact on just my own thoughts day to day and my own interactions with people. And coming from that as well, my, my goals right now are to work with more injured soldiers and to work with combatives. So like soldiers learning and their training for fighting and being more in that approach because those type of, as well as like the ACFT, which is like their, their physical training, their preparation, they are new type of environments for a lot of these people. The soldier range that I work with is 18 to 24, 25. So they're all young kids leaving home and I feel for them because it's a new environment. This is an opportunity to see them learn and grow and to be able to have an impact on that type of age group is going to be one for me. I'm excited about it, but I'm also anticipating that if I can work with injured soldiers, I can work with combatives. I can work with that that physical training aspect. There's just a lot of ways we can sneak in the mental side of it with the breathing, with cueing, with going about talking about strategies and techniques that we can utilize then in there that they can now transition and utilize for behavioral change and becoming more accountable when they're not in those settings with us. And it's honestly just a really cool opportunity. Like I'm always open for new, new type of chances to grow as an individual, whether it's like I said, get like learning from other PEs or performance experts that are at different bases and installations and, and seeing their perspective, seeing their experiences, because we're all going to have different experiences. We could have the same exact experience in witnessing something, but how we perceive it and how we let it influence us is very relative. If so, what I want to ask this is, I seem like you always, uh, like we talked about always trying to get better, always trying to push more. 
we talked on the phone the other day about the 48 hour fast. You said you did a 60 hour fast. You know, you got into powerlifting. You got into you want to get into Muay Thai. You got into Jiu Jitsu. You got into, you're getting in all these different things, and it seems like you're always pushing yourself to be uncomfortable on a lot of different levels. What do you, what value do you see for people that are struggling or maybe can't find themselves or maybe beating themselves up negatively to push themselves to get better to be by being uncomfortable and maybe it's doing something completely different. So, I mean, personally, like you said, I love being in situations that are new and they're different. I don't like, I mean, I don't mind having like the same day by day thing, but being able to have these new connections and new relationships is cool. Being able to do things like more tire, like getting into the different forms of training. I love that because it's not only testing me physically, but it's testing me emotionally and mentally about what I can do when I put intense, deliberate practice into it. And I show that I can be disciplined and accountable. And I think it's hard for people to want to do those type of things, maybe because they don't know where, know where to begin exactly. And maybe that's from the role models they might have in their life, or maybe they're just, they're nervous or they're scared. And, and I, like I told you, like when I did the, the 60 hour fast, I have a friend who's going through a lot of different health issues. And we were talking about it one day and I, I wanted to, to be there to support her. And I said, Hey, like, you know, like kiddingly, I was like, I'll do it with you. And she's like, okay, cool. And I was like, oh, well, we're going to make this an actual thing. And like, I want you to tell me your strategies and what you're doing so I can be better at this. So I can go through it and understand not only what it's like to be in your shoes, but also understanding that, you know, I can help her realize she's not alone and by herself in this. And there's someone that's that's there to, to help her if she needs it. So that's sometimes all we need is knowing that there's a presence or there's someone there who's willing to help us. Even if we don't get to directly help them, knowing that there's someone there, it, it encourages us. Like being a kid trying to learn to walk, they're, they're, they may be scared, they may be nervous, but they see you in front of them, you're that presence, and they're going towards you because they know you're there. Whether you're actually helping them deliberately, it does not necessarily matter because you're there and they're seeing you and they want to be there for you or they want to get to you because it makes them happy. And that's one of the nice things about kids as a whole is they're not necessarily caught up in the pressure or, or the way of thinking that we are as we get older and become adults. Because as you said, we tend to judge not only ourselves, but other people. I think one of the, the, the best things we can do is take a step back and, and, and really look at some of the, the objectives we want to accomplish and the intermittent steps it's going to take for us to get there. Because if we can look at things step by step, I think we have a better chance of seeing what we can go and do for the big picture. And it doesn't necessarily mean we have to have a big picture drawn out. But in terms of individuals getting comfortable, being uncomfortable, that's one of the first things I tell everyone to do, especially when I talk to them. If I'm training with them, if I'm, if I'm meeting them for the first time, like we're going to get we're going to do it. There's no other way about it. There's no ifs, ands or buts. We're going to get uncomfortable. We're going to talk about some things that you might not like, but that's OK. If you don't like it, tell me why you don't like it. Let's communicate. Let's open up those avenues of communication and, and let's just be there and, and sort through these type of things. And like, I would love to give some specific examples. I, I can't really do that at, at this point. Um, just kind of with like some of the, the stuff I, I'm doing, but um, it's, it's always very eye opening because as individuals, we're very unique and we're very different. And I think that's another beauty of being a human being and also being in this life is no one thing is ever going to be the same, but what we can do to be better as people and be more successful there's things out there for techniques and strategies that we can all start doing. Yeah. yeah and it's, it's like you said, if we just need to be kind to others, to ourselves and allow ourselves to, you know, wrap our head around what we want to accomplish and, and seeing what we, we enjoy in life and what makes us happy. If we're willing to do those type of things, then I think more people would be willing to throw themselves into a situation they're uncomfortable with because they can see what it's like to grow and knowing like what you start feeling like in that situation where you're like, your butterflies are flying all over the place. Some people like that feeling because even when your butterflies are all over, you can help them fly together. Like think of the mighty ducks, like the V, the, they, the duck fly together. And when they yep. do, they're stronger. We want to do the same thing with our butterflies. We want our butterflies to align and direct us to where we're trying to go. So I think the more we start to get uncomfortable, the more we can understand what makes us nervous, what those type of ticks might be, and how we can actually use that to our advantage. Yeah. And it's, it's going through the process of it too, of being uncomfortable physically, mentally, whatever it may be. 
I talk a lot about the physical side because you're uncomfortable. You're like, say you're running a 5k or you're doing an, a tough mud or you're doing all these races. It's brutal going through it. You want to quit. There's so many challenges, but surviving it and getting through it, it's like, oh my gosh, I can do it. Can be that spark to change everything from that growth mindset moving forward, you know? So there's so much value in it. The, the last question I have for you, and I, I let you, anyone take it in any direction. I started asking it a couple of interviews back and I kind of took it from impact theory, but I like the question is what is the impact you're trying to have on the world? So, I mean, I want to have a, not just a positive impact. I want to have an effective impact. That's, that's always been my goal. Um, I think back to I'm not the biggest fan of self-help books, but like one book that I had recommended to me is called The Carpenter by, by John Gordon. And his three main principles in the book are whatever we do in life, we want to make sure we're doing it to serve, to love, and to care. And we can define that to whatever population or individual or objectives we have. As long as we're we're caring about what we're doing for a deeper purpose, but we love what we're doing, we love the individuals we're working with and caring about those people, I think it allows us to be more effective and positive in our day to day. And personally, I've seen that in many different types of formats, whether coaching, whether in the hospital setting. I mean, I, my parents have both gone through some pretty serious illnesses over the last few years. And so like I was a caretaker for the last three years, helping them get through a, a few of the different diseases they had. And for me, seeing how the nurses, the doctors responded and worked with them was so eye-opening because it's a lot of those people, you see them in there reacting and working and being the same type of individual with every patient. They care. They love what they're doing. They're there to help make a better impact. They're there. They were there for me. They were there for them in the medical sense. They were trying to be there for everyone. And I understand how jobs like that can be draining, and but going through our life, we build a better and a larger mental capacity for these type of tasks. And I think that's another reason why I've, I've kind of been able to create and cultivate the mindset I have is I've seen, I've seen my parents knock on death's door and I've seen the way they respond and how they treat other people and what in those times, what's important to them is their family, their friends, the people that love. And knowing that even in some of the worst dire of times, they're allowing themselves to cherish and be grateful for what they have and know what they're fighting for. And I, and I think in that sense, I've, I've been very fortunate because I've taken that from them and I, and I want to be able to have an impact. And, you know, I tell, I told people back in college, like one of my things, one of my goals was to be the person I always believed I needed when I was younger. Like everyone always needed someone that gave them that little pip, that little like kick in the butt or that little extra encouragement. Um, and sometimes like I think about like being that individual that I thought I needed if I can do that and I can do that on a bigger scale for more people, then I know I'm making an impact. I'm being effective. And a big part of that as well is that it makes me happy to work with people. It makes me happy to see that we can make change together because no one's ever really alone. Like, yes, they're alone in the sense that they're doing it, but I want to be that source. I want to be that person that they're, that's there for them no matter what. And I think another part of being in the health and wellness field that's so awesome about it is whether it's the physical stuff or the mental stuff is, I've made a lot of great friends, a lot of great connections because we just want to make a difference. And if, if we can do that and leave an impact on touching other people's lives, even for a small amount of time, then that makes it worthwhile to be in this field. Yeah, I love that, man. I have so much respect for everything you're doing, you know, everything you're doing with your parents. Like that's, that's awesome. You know, I mean, it's, it's amazing that you, you know, a lot of people, you know, don't do what you're doing from, you know, just having the big heart that you have, taking care of your parents, helping out with what you can to the impact you're making with other people's lives on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, it's, it's awesome, man. And I appreciate you coming on, telling your story. And um, if anyone wants to reach you, is it best Facebook, Instagram? What's best for you? I mean, Facebook's fine. Instagram's fine too. I mean, to however they want to reach me, whatever works best for them is honestly fine by me. Like I said, the, the more people I can interact with and, and talk to, the merrier man i just like we said we want to be kind we want to help people and i think the more we're able to do that the better and i mean thank you for having me on the on the podcast and the show dude it's awesome to be able to get back and, and be able to chit chat and, and talk to you a little bit more as well i mean it's cool that our paths have, have kind of like intertwined and brought us back this way absolutely man i appreciate it and um, we'll definitely stay in touch and we'll talk next time so remember everybody be kind chase discomfort i'll see you guys soon